DM, hi, uh, welcome to the podcast. Uh, great to have you on the show. Good to be here. Yeah. So uh, you know uh, the whole the whole area of inquiry. I want to discuss with you and grow with you. Uh, isn't obviously in the zone of of retail and how retail is going to shape up. But uh, my view is that anything like that uh, has to be discussed in the broader context of how brands and businesses uh, are getting built in the market, such as India, and an immediate broader context of how India as a culture behaves, uh, right? Because uh, having worked in this market for for a bit and trying to build many brands and businesses, uh, I often wonder that a lot of the ways in which the indian consumer behaves uh, or the market itself behaves is is fairly different uh, from what uh, uh, you know a lot of us were taught uh, when we were growing up uh, during mba uh, schools and so on and so forth or for that matter what's been academically uh, kind of written about or or documented yeah i i, I call it dheeraj the as much an asserting market as it is an emerging market uh, therefore when it comes to food fashion entertainment uh, we don't just follow other markets that have emerged before we got to learn it here and apply it here uh, it has been the game for me yeah that's that's beautiful i like this whole idea of asserting uh, rather than emerging it's a, it's a very uh, interesting framing because then you're saying that these ideas are home grown they grow up here you can't perhaps transplant models uh, from outside lock stock and barrel here yeah in, i mean i come from an mnc background and for me emerging market always meant you know how the market is going to behave after it has emerged because there are other markets that have emerged 10 years back some have emerged 5 years back uh, but it doesn't play out like that it doesn't and uh, uh, food tastes uh, uh, don't follow that personal care tastes don't follow that yeah. fashion tastes don't follow that so i think with with all the experience and gray hair of dealing with this consumer i say <laughs> asserting first emerging uh, after is how i played yeah yeah that's that's beautiful uh, i also wanted to uh, you know uh, go straight to the jugular of this conversation uh, dm you know i mean i have also personally uh, been fascinated about say the size or the pot- potential of india and and for long right i mean about say a decade two decade ago there was this uh, huge study by a certain consultancy saying india the bird of gold and 1 billion consumers and i honestly thought that nothing could be more misleading uh, about india because when i started looking at for example the only source i had when i was writing my previous book was the census of 2011 right and just basic stuff i realize 600 million people in india do not have access to pure clean drinking water sanitation etc etc i mean forget about being in the consumer class you look at any other uh, durable as a surrogate right i realize that 450 million people uh, had access to uh, say uh, four wheelers uh, and not more than 200 million people had access to two wheelers and across the brands and businesses that i was working with whether it's amazon or prime video uh, you know you realize that that the consumption kind of tapers out after say top 50 top 60 million right you're tapering out after that it was really really hard uh, to to push beyond that and and i always wonder if this whole number was hugely inflated and you take that and you cut to the whole hoopla around mobile phone uh, ownership and smartphone ownership and internet ownership that 600 million people are internet enabled 400 million people are youtube but there's a huge difference as you said as well in our previous conversation between being online and and tasting some content uh, free versus actually buying online right and i wanted to prove with you this whole concept of of accessing free online versus buying online and what could be the strategies which can help us with that no i think democratization of digital access is a lovely thing that has happened uh, uh, because uh, in uh, 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 in a market like india the digital access builds a builds a flyover over the friction of working on the ground in india so that's a lovely thing to to happen but uh, not just the economic part of it but even the psychographic part of whether people are ready to consume what you have to offer whether they find it interesting enough or not 
is yeah. a thing to be to be seen so for our income levels if i take modernity as one one axis then for our income levels we are far more digital yeah we are digitally literate uh, but we are an asserting market and if digitally literate in other countries might mean you consume x y z etc etc uh, but here uh, you may not and uh, that's why we find that uh, people are consuming but people are consuming uh, uh, video content people are consuming uh, talking to each other the facility of talking to each other uh, over 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 uh, the digital highway in a in a video manner people are connected to each other through simple things like whatsapp uh, they are finding they are finding social groups all those parts are also consumption to me uh, whether people spend more money and yeah. buy things on the digital highway or not or subscribe and pay for more content or not i think is a journey that is is two ways at least you have access to the consumer can you lure her can you make things that are interesting at her level of uh, sorry i am a grocer my consumer is largely a she, she so uh, yeah. bear with me on that uh, so can you make it interesting enough in the first place and then is it value enough just because yeah. it is coming with the bells and whistles of coming on it on the digital highway uh, doesn't yeah. mean it 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 can get away by not being the great down to earth value so yeah, yeah so as a as a result where we are today over 90% of the people are consuming uh, on their smartphones uh, people are consuming uh, content and not buying anything yeah interesting and let's let's probe this a bit more uh, dm you know i have spent a lot of time in fact uh, working on the brand amazon right and one of my biggest findings was uh, that india is not a convenience market right people have all the time i mean people will go to like my dad right he used to go to 16 uh, sabzi wala dukan and then come back and buy potato from the first one but he wanted this sense of having seen everything uh, right and and therefore we did this whole idea of or dikhao for instance on on amazon right and the more i worked i realized that the for example the girl in pilibhit uh, is ordering that dress uh, on amazon or mintra uh, not because it's easy to do or not because it's convenient to do but because she doesn't have access to that uh, you know uh, in 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 that in that market right she is not going to get that uh, in that market uh, so i realized that access for example over convenience is is a is a big factor i also realized that it's easier to transfer uh, buying of familiar materials online so for example we got a big spike uh, with mobile phones because you couldn't go wrong with it uh, right i mean you see the mobile phone on the neighborhood store and you come back and you uh, kind of buy it uh, from the uh, from the online space uh, so uh, you know what are the drivers in your mind uh, because from the outset people would say oh you know make it cheaper make it value give it convenience and people will shift from a offline behavior to an online behavior but looks like it's not that simple what to your mind could be the possible drivers to uh, to help cross the chasm one thing one thing is very very clear that uh, uh, no modern retail is a more convenient way to buying everyday things than existing indian micro retail in that sense by global standards india is actually an over retail country yeah so the fastest way to buy a grocery is to buy it from the kirana store who's probably located uh, in the same building where you are living or in the same apartment building where you are living and you can buy it in 10 minutes uh, most of what you need for everyday life so uh, there is no waiting till the next day for something to get delivered uh, for grocery or uh, there is no crossing 15 more conveniently possible ways of buying which is 15 kirana store to come to a supermarket uh, uh, so of completely uh, uh, convenience is not the currency yeah i think all of modern retail whether physical or digital is actually a celebration of choice hmm is uh, uh reaching to you this uh, the people with who are new consumers people with recent incomes it is 
firing up their imagination to yeah. consume, to explore more, discover more, uh, and uh, and uh, that's why they that's why they that's why they 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 wait for two days to to receive a skin cream, and they wait for they they travel for twenty minutes to go to a supermarket. They're not going there. They're not doing either of the things to save money or effort. They are doing yeah. this because they are they are uh, they are buy, able to buy more aspirational stuff that they want to graduate up to. So, yeah. Yeah. So there's also it's more, almost like this a jashan, right? I mean, uh, yeah. I, I remember I I used to do some market visit early, and uh, I mean in Ahmedabad, right? So there is a McDonald's and there is a temple uh, at CG Road uh, Circle, and there was a big bazaar. right and and that was a triangle for people right so you go there and you do shopping and then you uh, do a bit of puja and you do a bit of mcdonalds uh, with the family and you come back it's it's an event it's uh, it's not convenience it's not a chore uh, it's not something that you tick mark something that you look forward to uh, and i think what's interesting in what you're saying dm there is a glee of choice the glee of buying possibly there's also a glee of exploring the new in some sense that i i i ordered this on say geo or i ordered this on amazon uh, and i'm i'm experimenting with a newer platform do you think there is a joy yeah. of discovery there yeah. as well so i think apart from the merchandise that you buy uh being on a platform like this saying i shop at a at a uh, Reliance Smart is yeah. a marker of well-being. Yeah. See, one thing people, one thing people, uh, especially when they learn from the West, one trick we miss that uh, this is this is a wannabe middle-income country. Hmm. So we haven't celebrated our consumption incomes yet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, after you been middle income and beyond for three generations yeah you start paying for convenience you see, the most precious thing in my life is my time and my attention uh, but here we are saying here is you know i am earning twice as much as my father did but you know i cannot wear my bank account on my chest as of honor uh, therefore i have to show it in my behavior my consumption behavior and that's where i want to go to uh, a modern branded eatery and i want to go to a modern supermarket and i want to know how to order from an app that act itself is an act of upgrade yeah and of course things that we buy are are again markers i'm buying more i'm buying more dry fruits today because my mother used to buy yeah. dry fruit only on special occasions yeah but i am buying dry fruit that's a marker of that's a marker of my well being uh, today so people are yet enjoying small things of life people are yet enjoying uh, enjoying doing doing uh, these celebrations for themselves so this yeah. i think the, the uh, what i what i find is the decision makers in these industries actually are at a level which is comparable to the west yes and their incomes are also there their influences are also there therefore they miss out on a lot of simple joy that the market market and the yes. uh, larger number of consumers in india uh, yet want to celebrate yeah that that consumption is is you know huge meaning system of our growth our success uh, you know celebration of the uh, and the markers as you saying of of what we are achieving in life uh, the badges yeah that's that's very very interesting uh, the the whole pandemic context uh, dm right i wanted to probe a bit and of course there is a bit of delta right i mean uh, for example uh, you know we work with spotify and there is a delta on streaming service there is a delta on ott platform so there is definitely delta in entertainment uh, etc there is delta definitely on digital payments with say brands such as phone pay uh, and and so on and so forth so there are several categories who've seen uh, as as what is said is that pandemic made happen what marketers could not in in say uh, a decade or so uh, how do you link this to retail uh, are behaviors changing do you feel they are changing for good or uh, is this again uh, where is the hype and where is the reality on this piece no, no, so uh it's a it's a uh, elementary thing to say that the hype is always ahead of the reality and yeah. the reality will bring things down to ground but i think the core is all the brands that you mentioned 
Yeah? Yeah. All of us modern retailers, all of us uh, uh, digital modern retailers, uh, new streaming services, etc. We are all agents of change. We are bringing yeah. change in people's lives. And what an external event like the pandemic does is it shakes up what is settled habit behavior. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, people, to, 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 to bring it right into your kitchen, uh, people who never made pasta at home during the pandemic made pasta at home. Yeah. Because food became entertainment, camaraderie, celebration, yeah. social media show off, everything. Yeah. So people tried new products. People tried new ways of payment, as you mentioned. People tried new way of entertainment. People tried new way of shopping. Now, the very fact that the habit, old habits were broken and people were experimenting, to me is great news. Not, not just good news, it's great news. It's, it's free sampling of yeah. behavior that we like that happened yeah. for external reasons. And all of us marketers know a good pressure sampling yes. is always a good, good thing for people who are actually selling change. And we are all selling change. So I don't care how much of it will last, but last it will. And as you yeah. said, last it will more than what all of us marketers could do with our, our imagination and our marketing monies. Yeah. And are you seeing, therefore, I mean, are you seeing some of these behaviors at a slightly larger scale, like people experimenting with pasta at home? Uh, are you seeing it as a scale or is it just a Facebook show phenomena? So I'm saying if you if you have brought in new spices at home, if you brought in yeah. new ingredients at home, yeah. if you brought in that ready paste uh, that yeah. you had never bought earlier. Yeah, that by itself is an experimentation. That by itself is good. Yes. Yeah? yes. So that resistance yeah. is gone. Uh, and uh, see, earlier what happened was food experimentation happened outside home. Yeah. You tried a new cuisine outside. And when you have done Chinese 28 times with your family outside, after that, you brought it home. Yeah. Yeah. So here, all new cuisines uh, came home. Yeah. And, you know, uh, food sellers like us made hay. Uh, because out of home consumption stopped and all, yeah, it all got happening. transferred. Yeah. All got but transferred. I, I agree with you. It's a, it's a huge mental breakthrough, right? For experimentation, at least in food to come home, because uh, home was always the citadel, the, the, the core, and the roti, dal, chapati, and outside was experimentation. And experimentation coming home is almost the periphery coming to the core uh, in that sense. And, and that's a very interesting development culturally. Yes, yes, I think so. I think so. Yeah. And even when your people have started ordering now, uh, uh, the the worries have not gone, and therefore they are ordering ghar ka khana from outside. They yeah. are asking, you know, homely homely food, even when they are ordering from from outside, and you know, home chefs are have sprung up yes. uh, uh, everywhere, and uh, and how? Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. In fact, in food, uh, whatever work I did, I, I figured that food in India is always about the core, right? I mean, for example, I was studying the ordering in pattern through Swiggy and Zomato, etc. And if you look at that, 85 to 90% uh, of ordering in is explained by biryani, butter chicken, paneer, and uh, Chinese Indian, uh, right? So, uh, I mean, there's very little experimentation uh, of other cuisines uh, in fact, when it comes to food in India, uh, right? I mean, somebody used to tell me that, you know, Indians, when they go abroad, unless they test the spice on their tongue, uh, you know, they don't, they don't get it. I mean, it, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so, so there, then again, any kind of experimentation, whether it's Indian cuisine or, or outside or even regional is very, very interesting for a market, which is notoriously wedded to the traditional palate. Yeah. Also, I've, I've always believed that, uh, uh, the fun about India is uh, your tradition is my modernity. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The 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 uh, uh, in a in a uh, Rajasthani kitchen of mine. Yeah. Uh, appam and avial is is modernity. Or, or luchi and cholar dal is yes. modernity. It's yes. actually more fun because it is closer to my palate Yet than having modernity. having a Moroccan. Uh, uh, cuisine, which yes. where, where I have to struggle to put it together. I'm having as much experimentation fun with 
Luchi and Cholar Dal, yeah. as I would, I would, I would have. So I think yeah. that's, a, that's a playground that exists in India. Yeah, think. yeah, yeah. We have that rich palette. Absolutely. So, uh, DM, uh, in your book, Supermarket Wala, right? I mean, they're obviously uh, hugely valuable insights. One of the insights which interested me was this whole idea when you talk about how women look at other women for inspiration in terms of fashion and makeup and so on and so forth, right? And one of my theories always has been that, you know, there comes a stage in India when uh, phenomenons or ideas, they cross the, uh, the curve, right? So once you begin to see enough Amazon, Amazon packages being delivered into your neighborhood, you feel that it's going uh, and therefore you want to be, uh, you know, land on that, that bandwagon, right? So we are a wave market. Uh, you realize a certain politician or political party will win and you will swing uh, on that side. So, uh, you know, what works is what works. Uh, and therefore, uh, you know, the big brands become bigger and therefore scale is important for success in India. Do you think uh, that's happening in retail, uh, especially online retail, so on and so forth? Or do you think can that be used as a lever uh, to uh, to make the transition happen faster? Uh, can we create a wave? Is there a wave uh, or can we create a wave? Uh, in the wave, you get trials. People are curious mm. and they'll get trials. So you get, you get, you get, if I may say, you get f- dating and flirting. Yeah. You, you don't get shadi. You don't get marriage in a wave. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, there, there she will check uh, uh, on her own terms finally, but she'll try it out for reasons of wave. The other one, which is a little contrarian for me to say is, uh, we say this whole e-commerce thing is a new phenomena uh, and you know, touch and feel versus remote buying, et cetera. Yeah. So here is, here, is, here is my point of view. Uh, if I were to define e-commerce as Trusting a seller without visiting their premises. Trusting a seller remote yeah. to deliver their merchandise home. If I define e-commerce in that manner, then half of all grocery in Mumbai was e- e-commerce 20 years back. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Grocery has always been home delivered. Abhi usko angrezi mein we call it e-commerce, but yeah. uh, uh, grocery has always been home delivered. Nobody went to the store, people called up or just sent a slip of paper uh, or in recent years, WhatsApp the order to the uh, seller. You never had to go to his shop and he brought it home. So my point is the customer has always been ready. Yeah. It's just that we are trying to speak French to her and you're saying she's not ready for French. Yeah. I think the more intuitive we make our interfaces, the more approachable we make our modern forms of interaction, uh, the more she will flow, you know, yeah. uh, in, in we, we say e-commerce penetration is only single digit percentages in, in actual share of market terms. But when I say that she's always been buying half her, half, half her daily necessities in e-commerce, then rest of it is lost in translation in today's digital language. Yeah. Uh, so you make it easier for her, talk to her in her language, yes. give her the option of sometimes sometimes scribbling and uh, uploading her order or sometimes telling you on voice yeah. uh, or and whatnot, instead yeah. of making her read a lot of English uh, and uh, instead of making her learn that uh, the, the face wash she's buying is either 12 grams or 72 grams or 48 grams, which she has never thought of it like that. She has bought her face wash saying, yeah, travel ka face wash, yeah, everyday face wash, and this is family face wash. Yeah. The same thing applies to all consumer categories. You go talk that language to her, make it more intuitive, and uh, yeah. uh, the market will surprise you. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. my point of view. Yeah, no, that's fascinating because you're saying it's not category creation. The category is there. It's just transference of that consumption on, on your platform uh, in some ways. And I also... Uh, I also read into what you're saying is that the less we sell this as new, the better off we are. The more we sell this as old and familiar, yeah. uh, the, the better we would be. Yeah, so we, we work on, we are saying the uh, language that India speaks is, uh, India writes in, is yeah. not English language, is what I call WhatsApp language. Yeah. Yeah, which is uh, N-A-M-A-K for salt, namak. Yeah. 
uh, typed in Roman letters is how Indians write. Yeah. Uh, you can write it in Gujarati like that. You can write it in Bangla like that. So on, on our GeoMart platform, we have made sure that you can search for whatever, search for salt in eight languages. Amazing, yeah. Yeah, so then you're saying, uh, you don't have to work hard. I will work hard yes, yeah. to change my business so yeah. that it, it, it starts uh, uh, being intuitive for you. I think that's the way I see it. I, I, mean, I think this is a good one to say that it's actually good to not sell it as a new thing, yeah. but go as close to familiar as possible. Yeah. That, that yeah. could probably do the trick, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we in fact tried that with Amazon when we did Apni Dukan as an idea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because we realized that, uh, you know, I mean, we always try to kind of make believe, but the fact that it calls you by your name, it says ki, uh, you have this product, you can buy other products. It's exactly the behavior uh, that say a Dinesh store, uh, which is next door uh, will have. And we say it's actually it's your own apni dukan. So, so present it more as a familiar than, than a new, than a change uh, of behavior yeah, and yeah, you will yeah, yeah. get less resistance. But the uh, other, other one to provoke uh, thinking is I would say is, uh, uh, we don't buy anything from the machine ourselves. Hmm. Yeah, we don't even we don't even uh, put a put a coin at the train station or airport to to dispense chai for ourselves. There is always yeah. Uh, yeah. there is always somebody doing it for me. We don't buy while we know that all train tickets come from a computer system. Yeah, we don't buy it ourselves. We still still tell our trusted Gupta ji to uh, yeah. buy and oh, 10 rupees charge kar lena, you know as commission. Yeah. It's so we are a we are a we are not a DIY country. We are culturally yeah. a do it for me DIFM country, as I say. Yeah. Now, yeah. if I take that as an asserting market fact, yes, and the fact that we are an outsourcing capital of the world, yeah. We, yeah. So when you put that together, you have to ask yourself, how do I modify? How do I yes. morph my platform yeah. to tune into? The what I may call it the IRCTC behavior or a coffee yes. dispenser behavior in yeah. Yeah, so that's very interesting. And that also brings me DM to the question of technology, right? I mean, uh, we can use technology for uh, for the, you know, the, the shiny, sexy appeal of it. Or we can use technology to what you're saying of enabling more of what I want, right? So for example, role of say voice search. Uh, yeah. in that and, and role of say vernacular in that and say I don't know at some stage I mean I feel that the role of AR VR in or or AI in getting a fashion line in Milan is okay but can you use AI to make sure that a child doesn't drop out of school uh, in, in, in rural India then then technology is, is really being uh, useful uh, uh, do, you, do you see role of technology such as this a chatbot AI AR VR AI etc uh, helping us leapfrog uh, the whole retail uh, bit in India do you see the role of that is, is, is anything being done there at all yeah, everybody is trying. I mean, I believe hundreds of things are being tried. That's the way, uh, in a in a in a Darwinian manner, uh, things yeah. will evolve for the for the industry. But uh, the challenge that I put to myself and my team is, uh, how do you do language independent retailing? All right. Yeah, in a supermarket, I'm visually buying. Yeah. Yeah, I am familiar with the color and the. Uh, uh, even if I don't know the language, I, I broadly know the brand uh, brand name that yeah. I buy, and then I just pick and buy. Yeah. yeah? Uh, I don't need to know uh, language. I don't need to instruct it. I don't need to search in a language. So I think to challenge ourselves and say that okay, we are a we are a digitally democratized country. Uh, data speed, data is cheap here. Data speeds are good here. Then can I can someone present me? my supermarket shelf on my screen. Yeah. And all I do is I visually buy the way I buy in a supermarket. I'm saying, oh, yeah. wala wala ketchup, and I put it in my cart. Yeah. Instead of saying, I want, you know, forcing me to buy the way a European would buy or an American or would how? buy. For, for them, yeah. English is a natural language. For me, it's yeah. not. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so those kind of technology being used to actually actually make things more intuitive yeah. uh, to current behavior is a, is a fascinating area as I, I, yeah. see, I see for myself. Yeah, UX UI, which is driven more by life than, than by technology and algorithms uh, is, is what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, algorithm reminds me of one more thing that we were seeing in some of the research that we are doing. Uh, 
it's a peculiar thing again in India that the uh, and we were doing it in the doing the research in the context of uh, grocery shopping and uh, uh, the decision maker is the mother. Yeah. So the but the person placing the order is the daughter. Yeah. Now, it's is the daughter's device tablet. Yes. Uh, is where the transaction is happening. Yeah. yeah. And the daughter is a teenager. Depending upon her browsing history, uh, the stimuli being thrown at her are yes. very different <laughs> from her yeah. purchase purchase so called purchase behavior yeah. where she's just an outsourcing partner for the for the mother. When you take that into account, yeah. And the person receiving the delivery in at home is a completely different person. Yeah. No, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And, 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 and 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 research. Uh, Smart women are telling us, please, when the delivery boy is coming, why is he calling me? Yeah. I'm not interested. Why can't he call some, you know, my help who is there? Yeah. He's the one who's going to, uh, yeah. why is the delivery being ex experience designed for me? It should yeah. be designed for uh, 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 this person who is who yeah. manages all, all delivery for our yeah. home. I mean, those yeah. are realities where technology can help. But yeah, you have to take it into account the actual life, life as you said. Yeah, yeah. For the uh, do it for me culture. In fact, uh, yesterday we were we were looking at uh, Facebook interaction for a for a baby, uh, you know, dapper brand, uh, right? Uh, Pampers, and we realized that we have a huge amount of engagement from men, right? And it was fascinating because as an agency, we've been running this campaign. It takes two and all of that, but yeah, yeah. some somewhere in my mind, you know, I knew that. Uh, we can't get so liberal so easily uh, in India. So there, there would be some other way to read this. And we realized that because we've been running campaigns where we've been putting up uh, pictures of kids with parents and so on and so forth and celebrating uh, the family. And therefore, men are picking that up and posting that on their Facebook. Uh, you know, And that's what is giving us the engagement with men. Uh, not that men have suddenly woken up to the <laughs> need to buy diapers and, and yeah. change it through the night. Yeah. So it's important to get to the real behavior, discussing several ideas around retail and how people behave all the way to technology and the role that technology can play in making more lifelike UX UI, as we said, uh, right? Uh, so, yeah. so very, very interesting. I want to, I want to switch gears and and discuss with you something that uh, you and I spoke about, and what I call uh, right access brands, right brands which uh, give consumers access to a certain category uh, without having to spend the huge amount on on marketing of it. So, say uh, Balaji wafers is an access to Lays, or Axon shoes uh, is an access brand to uh, Nike, or or Lawman jeans to Levi's, and so on and so forth. And India is big on access brands because people want to consume the category and not essentially pay the premium uh, for the for the brand uh, many many times uh, and you were you were uh, telling us that you know there's this whole idea in india where uh, the label brands are actually not label brands they they are going beyond that and they are being brands in their own rights and now wanting to find a place across retail formats uh, right and that's an interesting phenomena ground of phenomena which is developing in india i'd like to hear a little bit more about what your theories are on that yeah, so first and foremost, I think, uh, uh, and this is typical with global brands, is uh, 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 at, uh, in their journey of understanding uh, India and tuning into this market, such a large opportunity market, they start by talking down to the market. Mm. Yeah, so... Uh, uh, when you when you say that there is a global brand uh, that is that is at a premium and you didn't the fact that you need an access brand itself yeah is is, is an, in my mind a negative thing as a business for the global leader yeah uh, the global leader must, must understand that uh, a brand is different from product and price brand yeah. is a brand is a value brand is a brand is a belief uh, and that belief can be delivered at several price points, uh, uh, etc. This Marks and Spencer shirt that we are wearing, we went through the same journey. They came and said, a Marks and Spencer shirt is a Marks and Spencer shirt. And yeah. it'll cost you the same in Hong Kong and in London and in India. And in their first round in India, nobody bought it. Yeah. 
and then they then we the, 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 it, it became a JV with our our group, and then we started saying, Marx and Spencer's is design. It's the cut. It's the material. It's the brand value. Yeah. yeah. Where that shirt is made is secondary. Yeah. So let's not make it in your traditional places, but let's make it in places that we think uh, are are good sourcing uh, places for a, for the Indian market. Yeah. And the moment we did that and got this equation right, Marks and Spencer became the mainstream brand. It didn't need right. the crutches of an access brand, uh, if I may put yeah. it that way. And from then onwards, it has taken off. Uh, and and how? On on the on the retailer-owned brands, as you say. Yeah. Okay. Let me let me use the language of cricket and first give you a pitch report and then I'll give you the players. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So the so the pitch report is. Uh, uh, global brands, consumer brands were made when the consumer in those market was already middle income. Yeah. And at the time when the media was uh, uh, very narrow, few channels, so you could get reach a large number of people with very few uh, acts of communication. And the trade was uh, proliferated, disintegrated, and not powerful. Uh, now that is not the pitch report in India. Yeah. As we become middle income country, media is already fragmented. So you cannot get good mind share and the trade is already consolidating. So you cannot have a clean run uh, without resistance from the trade. Yeah. So the, the, the pitch is different. This, this pitch is turning. You're used to different pitches uh, there. So that conventional toolkit of brand building needs a revisit. In the yeah. in the Indian opportunity, now the players, I'm saying uh, retailers, everywhere in the world, the leadership in retail is uh, people who are from operations, people who are from supply chain, people who are efficiency people, and uh, in your mind, take a glance at leaders of retail uh, retail businesses in India, they are all consumer goods people. Uh, there's somebody from Coke and there's somebody from, several of us are from, from Levers, uh, uh, from Asian Paints. We're all consumer brands people. We understand the value of uh, building consumer uh, brands and therefore we retailers are building more brands. Yeah. And to borrow the terminology of yours, we are naturally building brands that are tuned to India. Therefore they become the excess brands. Yeah. So, uh, I don't have to sell uh, a stripped down version of Kisan Ketchup. I need to sell the third or the fourth brand because the market needs more brands. We are building those brands. We are not telling people buy our brands because those are our brands. We don't even tell people that, that these are brands made by your store that you trust. We say buy more brands because it's a smart thing to have more choice in life. So uh, when the game is played like this, there are two, two, two kinds of brands. Brands that are built shelf outwards yeah. and then brands that are conventionally built television outwards. Yeah, yeah. And I believe in the India play, both have, both have a good opportunity uh, going forward. And some of the retailers brands are already going into distribution uh, elsewhere. At the same time, some of the conventional FMCG companies are already producing goods for the retailer owned brand. So these two worlds will, will learn, uh, learn to live symbiotically, but it's a different game that you're playing. It's conventional private label game, yeah. as yeah. one reads in the book, will not get played in India. Yeah, this is interesting. This is in fact, uh, you know, retailers uh, in fact contributing to the whole uh, repertoire of brands. And you're saying that separate the meaning system of the brand from its delivery system. The meaning system and, and delivery systems are two, two different things and, and there can be an equation uh, between the two, which is the most interesting aspect of this. Uh, yeah, no, very interesting. And I mean, on that thought, I also had this thought that, you know, in fact, in India, uh, 
when I talk a lot about this is that across categories, because there's room for a lot more, right? We are still acquiring consumers. As you said, people are still in the first flush of their consumption. So there's a room for three brands and they need not essentially be very different from each other. Right, because across categories, consumers have their own rapatuas, right? I mean, so there's a place for two, three brands, maybe not different from each other, but hugely relevant for people. And therefore, the construct that we need to chase more of relevance than of differentiation at this point in time, because as a market evolution where we are, there's more for everybody to eat, there's more in category conversion rather than uh, share gain, conversion and upgrade. And upgrade, yeah. And, uh, yeah, people say, people say, uh, in a modern trade kind of consumer context, people say soap is a fully penetrated category. Yeah, everybody uses soap. Uh, toothpaste yeah. is a fully penetrated category. But uh, working jointly with uh, various uh, brands, local as well as global brands, uh, we are making customer shift. We are giving, making customer shift upwards. I, I always say in my reverse language. I'm in the business of uh, a customer walking into my store with Lux on our shopping list. I'm in the business of converting it to Dove on her checkout bill. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a playground of premiumization and upsizing of yeah. consumption. Yeah. And uh, that, a lot, lot is yet to be done. We are still, uh, whether it comes to even in fully penetrated categories, we are under consumers by yeah. far, even yeah. compared to Asian yeah. culture. And we are yet consuming basic brands, as you said. There is yeah. a lot of room for uh, room for uptrading and premiumization. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what uh, that's what happens. Yeah, yeah. DM, I want to I want to talk to you a bit about uh, GeoMart. Uh, right now, obviously, I mean, we know what Geo does, whichever category it enters, right? Telecom is an example where it became a phenomena and a hockey stick phenomena in a big way. In fact, the joke on Twitter right now is what India needs is a vaccine called Geo. <laughs> so I don't know if you've heard that. But what's what's the ambition really with GeoMart? Because it's had a fantastic debut. It's already uh, kind of uh, made a huge mark out there. Uh, how are we seeing this brand and business? Uh, right? What are the ambitions? What are the plans? Uh, how are you planning GeoMart uh, as a phenomena uh, for India? Yeah, so I think it's a uh, uh, it runs in the group that we go for the larger and the core India opportunity. Yeah. Uh, we don't skim the surface and then, then wait for the rest of the market to rise up to become relevant for us. That's the instinct. And uh, mm -hmm. even while GeoMart was launched during the pandemic, uh, uh, we said uh, uh, we want to go to as many places as possible and make digital shopping accessible. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when we launched, uh, uh, digitally, fresh food, fruits and vegetables, etc., was sold uh, in some 25, 30 markets in the country. Mm. These are all large cities. On day one, when we launched GeoMart, we launched, including fresh fruits and vegetables, we launched it in 200 cities, 199 wow. cities to be precise. Wow. So. Uh, a, a doctor or a lawyer's family or a district magistrate in in uh, in Sikar in Rajasthan or in uh, Behrampur in Orissa or in Nagarkoil in Tamil Nadu could buy their daily fruits and vegetables digitally the way uh, a, a family in Bangalore or yeah. Chennai would buy it. So yeah. that's the way we that's the way we approach on day one a market like that. And you will find us working very hard to uh, capitalize on and service the in, uh, inherent strengths and habits of India, Indian market. Mm. So one mm. of the things they're doing is we believe the lowest cost last mile in this country and the lowest cost grocery operation in this country near the consumer is the Kirana operation. Yes. Yeah. Everybody else is trying to build a flyover over the head of Kirana. Yeah. Yeah. 
Geomart is building a path that includes the Kirana and actually stops at the Kirana. And then it's like handing over a baton to the Kirana and then he, he is participating and doing, doing a part of the value chain work, uh, work for us. Because yeah. we believe uh, that micro entrepreneur, low cost, high energy micro entrepreneurship is a unique phenomenon in India. And we yeah. must we must include it in our, uh, now it, it, it's a good thing for the consumer. Yes. Because she is buying from the familiar. The there are, there are shades of that DIFM. Yes. Uh, I know I know it is coming from GeoMart, but I am not too worried about it because uh, uh, finally the delivery boy from Cheda General Store is bringing it to me. Yeah. And Cheda wale to be salse they they've been Correct. here around. Yeah. So it benefits the consumer. Uh, of course, it benefits uh, us in GeoMart. Uh, and it benefits uh, the, the Kirana store as well, because instead of this new phenomena of higher consumption, digitization of value chain, instead of this phenomena, bypassing it, yeah. the Kirana uh, uh, entrepreneur gets to participate in it. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I'm thinking in, in both on the consumer side, with the example that I gave you of you know search with WhatsApp language, and yes. there is more coming, some of it, I, I will not reveal right now. Yes. Uh, 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 making it more intuitive for the consumer to shop. And at the same time in fulfillment also, uh, uh, tuning in, staying tuned into the Indian reality and yeah. actually, actually capitalizing on it uh, yeah. is the way Geomart's instinct would work. Yeah. And, so this, yeah. and we, are, we, are, we, are, we are, if I may say, we are, uh, we are used to doing startups at scale. Yeah. Amazing. And, uh, so, uh, 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 Geomart to us is a startup. Yeah. That it is now now serving 215 cities across the country, et cetera, et cetera, is scale, yeah. but that doesn't worry me. To me, it's a startup. Every month we are doing new things on, on yes. uh, Geomart and it will remain that way. Yeah. 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 No, absolutely. And uh, I mean, that also partly answers uh, DM the other question I had that. Uh, you know, a large part of the e-retail is also the seller's ecosystem, uh, right? And some brands have worked on it. And But you're saying that rather than build a separate seller ecosystem, you are in fact including uh, the current whole uh, uh, retail network, the Kirana network, you are uh, making them friends uh, of the brand. And that's really the big advantage that we have here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I wanted to ask you also, I mean, uh, I mean, if, if there are a lot of entrepreneurs or startup people uh, listening to us uh, on this podcast and, and this platform, you know, I mean, India is also a stage where we have huge, big companies. I mean, Tata's are coming into e-retail, Geo is in e-retail, and this is a game of scale, uh, right? As we are saying, 200 cities and 40 million and so on and so forth. Uh, but at the same time, the way things have changed uh, in India, right? I mean, uh, anybody can uh, start a business uh, from the comforts of their drawing room or kitchen or or wherever you are, right? I mean, you can have a ship card, pack it up. You can have a easily set up a, a e-commerce uh, set up uh, online. So it's the the ease to business has increased. People are trying to turn their passion into uh, into business ventures. I mean, pandemic has also kind of uh, you know propagated that. Do you do you feel uh, that there can be a coexistence of uh, uh, these micro entrepreneurs, more tech enabled, more new age, uh, or or do you think by and large scale is very, very critical in India to, to make it? Uh, where would you be on that? And what would be your advice uh, to somebody who's actually wanting to start small and, and not have the scale? No, very interesting that you ask. And to me, there are, there are, two, there are two different things. Yeah. Uh, uh, one is highway building hmm. and the other is uh, driving a vehicle. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we are building digital highways to the homes as well as the minds of the families that you want to serve. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you have a good road, yeah. uh, the best car would also run well on it. 
a skateboard would also run well on it a bicycle yeah. would also run well on it uh, i won't say bullock cart but a bicycle would also run well on it so uh, you know if distribution in india uh was that path or the highway to reach consumers then that distribution yeah. conventionally was riddled with infinite number of friction uh, speed breakers and frictions and potholes and yeah entry barriers which, which would take it would take you a generation to build if you if you made a good consumer brand and you you had an insight you had the recipe you had the passion and technology to put it together uh, as a brand to build distribution would take you gener- a generation yeah yeah uh today if you if you are making a, a a great granola bar yeah out of bangalore yeah uh in the third month of the first production first batch production coming in the third month a smart uh, customer who likes your proposition can buy it sitting in shillong yes uh even 5 years back that was unheard of yeah so i think this is a great time to uh be building consumer brands in india the uh because the the uh, uh digital distribution as well yeah. as digital shopping by end consumers uh, liberalizes reach that is like it has never happened before yeah uh, the people who should be worried with this change is actually legacy brands because the traditional distribution was an entry barrier yes for somebody else to come in now their traditional distribution is actually becoming a a drag for them yeah uh, uh, because as they innovate their their conventional three layer four layer distribution system is not able to cope with the proliferation of uh, choices that exist uh, digital is the way forward so i think it's a great leveling level playing field available to anyone who has a passion to build a consumer brand in india india today and the game has just started yeah so you're saying that the highways highways are in fact going to help uh, the smaller entrepreneurs rather than choke them because uh, they suddenly now have the vehicle i mean they they can now fly past all the earlier and distribution i mean used to be such a mammoth uh, thing right i mean that was the win or lose game that's right uh, pretty much Uh, and if that's sorted then then it's about building the brand having the proposition and being able to deliver the quality so there is uh, this is where i get to ask the questions and i you know all the discussion i've been looking forward to this and uh, i'm going to ask you just a couple of things two or three things uh, which i ask and learn from all the smart people that I, that i meet so the first one and give yeah. me quick answers yeah <laughs> uh, uh, uh this has been an extraordinary year the pandemic year yeah yeah uh what do you think is a is one thing that you learned in this year uh, that you otherwise would have missed or would not have would not have learned uh, in the normal course yeah i mean very strangely dm you know uh, my my learning has been very contrary to what everybody else is saying i mean the fact that everybody is saying that you know oh you know the world can r- run from zoom the world can uh, they, nobody needs an office in fact my learning has been through i mean running a company through the pandemic that more and more you need cl- to be close to people you need to be together uh, you i mean nothing can substitute people to people experience no amount of technology can substitute that and to my mind this is the biggest social experiment which has proven this to me yeah uh, 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 so true it's actually actually told us through a through an artificial exper- experiment yes. uh, how important that is and now i'm going to ask you something that is that may sound like it from a prehistoric time when we actually had meetings sitting around the table etc etc so <laughs> uh, uh what would uh, so j- just jog your memory and tell me what is the first thing you would do when you enter a meeting 
now right now i i switch on my camera uh, <laughs> right but i think it's is more is is more uh, more is deeper than being technical i mean i like this whole idea of bringing yourself right the idea of presence uh, right so in a classic meeting i mean i have seen people go through meetings without going through it right and to me that is such a waste of time i'm i'm happy to encourage people to drop out of meetings to drop out of zoom calls if they don't feel that they can add value to that meeting or to that uh, call and there's nothing to be ashamed of in that and therefore whether it was in the physical world or in the zoom world in the zoom world switching on my camera is my switch to say that i'm present i'm here and in these 45 minutes or one hour i'll bring everything i have of myself to to this time no that's that's great to know and i think uh uh Uh, body language is so important the body language is also yeah. communication and uh, yeah. you have to you have to bring it uh, in your presence as you said yeah uh, yeah and uh, last bit there are lots of lots of uh, uh, younger people yeah. listening to us as we speak they work with us and uh, 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 most of the time it's expected that they learn from the gyan that you give Uh, yeah. tell me the reverse what is it that you you learn what is the one or two things that you learn from the from the younger generation yeah honestly uh, dm i mean what i admire about this generation is uh, you know the ability not to short sell themselves uh, right the ability to know exactly what they want the ability not to linger on i mean honestly i spent good early 5 6 years of my life doing work for others right and and it was it was told to me that that's how life is uh, right that you have to learn from somebody you have to keep doing things for others uh, and and today's generation doesn't take that uh, right and i i appreciate that i appreciate uh, this whole thing that you know this is who i am this is what i deserve these are my opportunities uh, you know you need to give it to me uh, if you want to engage with me so the ability uh, to say no not to short sell yourself is what i learned it's a, it's a very important thing you say that uh, uh being respect respectful doesn't mean you have to serve them yes yeah, yeah. uh being respectful is also looking in the eye and saying what you want to say yeah uh, I, th- i think that's a that's a, such an important thing to say so dinesh from my my rapid questions i will let you go uh, it's been it's been it's been such fun uh, chatting with you it's been an amazing conversation thank you so much dm uh, for doing this and definitely lots of lots of takeaways from this Thank you so much. Thank you. It was great fun. Yeah. My my Twitter handle, Facebook page, uh, everything is supermarket wala one word. Yeah.